All right. My my name is Farai Maaso, and I come from Zimbabwe, and I work with an organization called Batanai HIV and Safety Organization. Uh, my mother was the first person in HIV in Zimbabwe to declare a HIV status to the country, to the public. In 1989, when HIV was so people regarded it so so shameful, uh, there was a lot of discrimination, and uh, many people were dying, and there was no support whatsoever during that time. Uh, even the family, myself, being a son of a person who had come out to say she is HIV positive. I was also, we faced a lot of stigma at school, the teachers, with other kids and the community. But uh, my mother fought very hard to make HIV become seen, uh, you know, to be the face of HIV uh, so that people could really believe it. Because even the governments during that time, they didn't believe and they didn't want to come out to say HIV is there. So my mother was the face of HIV and she stood there in order to come and help people to come together to advocate and to, 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 uh, to, to advocate around support and care for people living with HIV and also to give information on how people can live positively. So she formed HIV support groups throughout the, the country and uh, during that time it was just a matter of uh, support for each other. But you would know that if you are HIV positive, one day you, you will die because there was no medication. But right now what we are seeing is people are now living longer. It's no longer a, it's no longer a death sentence if you are HIV positive. If drugs are available, people can live longer. And now we are hearing the message that if people take medication, it can also be part of prevention, which is quite a good thing. But also we have seen a lot of work that has been done by the communities, communities supporting each other, because during the time when medication was not there, the communities were the people on the ground who came in to support each other. So for, for, for us, I've seen communities doing that work of home-based care, uh, psychosocial support for each other, and it was a form of therapy that was there during that time. So at the moment, the combination of both, the community support and the medical side, if we work with it very well, it, now that people are going to take ARVs, and uh, they also need to be community support on the issues of adherence and so forth, so that people can live longer and uh, uh, people can have healthier lives and, and so forth. So we really need more support in terms of, uh, of, 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 of uh, treatment and more money for, for HIV. Because at the moment for Zimbabwe, it's, it's at about 60% coverage only. And we have reached universal access. So there's still a lot of information that needs to be done. And we can't let people continue to die. And the, especially the global fund, we are hearing that maybe people have not really given firm commitments to fund. I think this is the wrong time to stop funding because you will be taking us back where people fought for I think it, it's cheaper to move forward than to go back at the moment I think people the countries global fund everyone should commit their funding to make sure that we consolidate all the gains that we have made put people on medication and work towards an AIDS, HIV, HIV and AIDS free generation thank you